everyone welcome back today we are going to understand how does a github work and uh, how you can uh, use the github application to maintain your project structure so let's say if you're going to make some changes cumulatively to a project and if you feel like the project is lost or if you make some bad changes in the uh, in the project code and if you want to if you feel like you want to revert the changes yes github has the option to do that because it has a perfect version control uh, mechanism inside it so that it will be very very easy for us to maintain a project yes you can also work collaboratively uh, i mean with the help of github so that uh, i mean even a group of people can able to work together with this application so yes it, it is being used by a lot of lot of uh, people and even a lot of great companies are using it right now so let us get started and let us understand how to use github to create your own project and make some changes into it so that it can be useful for us to maintain your programs and even showcase this to a wider community using google colab so let's get started so basically what we want to do is uh, in order to get started we just want to create our own github account so in order to do that just go to github.com so just go to that here you can see uh, this is my github profile uh, where you can see uh, the repository which i've created uh, recently or i mean toward my entire uh, i mean entire tenure so here you can see uh, even we will be having some uh, feeds where i have followed few people i mean those uh, people made some changes in their github account and that is also been uh, showed here so likewise i could say that uh, i mean we could easily track changes and we even uh, create our own uh, new projects with the help of github so let's get started with that but anyways let me log out and show you like the uh, the front page of how github will be so this is the front page of github so if you already have an account with it you can directly go to sign in or you can go for sign up and just all you want to do is uh, i mean create a username so that it should be like very unique enough to uh, to make sure you are uh, i mean uh, i mean having your own repository in your github because uh, this unique name will be your name of your repository so make sure you have a unique name with it so obviously you should you should not have any alphanumeric characters or hyphens inside it so just plain uh, words and something like that so prefer a password and you all you want to do is uh, verify an account i mean let's say if you are going to give an uh, i mean email account to it all you want to do is uh, just go to your email account and verify it so that's it that's very easy to uh, i mean get uh, get signed up with github but make sure you have a unique username with it so if you have created that all you want to do is go to your uh, github sign in page just use your uh, user id or your email id and the password just sign in into it so once you signed in you will be listed with the repository which you have created just now so uh, this is one part so uh, here i mean let's say if you want to create a new repository all you want to do is just click new so if you click this new repository, it will just ask the repository name. So let's say I'm going to use, uh, like, let's say GitHub test. So this is going to be a new repository. So it, it also makes sure that I don't have any uh, any of the same uh, uh, repository which has the same name in my, uh, I mean, profile. So it's new, so there is no problem at all. I, uh, yes, you can also give some uh, description, testing GitHub. So this can be done so you can also choose to go for a uh, i mean make this repository i mean as a private one or a public one if you choose public uh, anyone can access your code so we go, we prefer to go for a public uh, i mean uh, area so let's maintain that and yes you can also add a readme file and even yes you can also choose a license file to it so let's say uh, i'm going to go for an mit license a standard license which you can use so i'm going to add a readme file to it so once i click create repository uh, everything will be done in a minute so you can see i mean all the contents have been created now so the readme file is basically a help file for the uh, for the newcomers or for the ones even for you to understand like what this repository does or something like that so i mean by seeing this name okay i'm just uh, created this repository to test github to test its functionality so if you feel like if you want to give some license to it yes you can also i mean provide some license to it so you can see uh, i mean uh, each and every license have their own i mean conditions like let's say permissions and limitations and stuffs so uh, so standard mit license will give you uh, will give you full uh, usage uh, permission for anyone to use a code so we are not going to liable i mean we are not going to give any liability uh, trust to with our code and you, even there is no warranty that this code will work or something like that so i mean i always use i prefer to go for an mit license but anyways it's up to us to create an mit license or not so 
that's up to us so anyways now this is done so if you feel like if you want to add some more contents to it you could go and click add or create new file or upload files this is one way of doing it but i would always uh, prefer to go for an uh, easiest method let's say using the github desktop we'll we'll try to understand like how to do it but anyways before going there uh, there are like few more options which i want to explore in this uh, area let's say uh, even uh, if someone is going to use your code they can even uh, i mean create some issues let's say uh, your code is working but there we are there are few bugs which i found so try to i mean uh, fix this out even uh, some can even use a pull request to i mean let's say i mean let's say a new contributor is going to like give some uh, new code or like changing your code for a, for a betterment of your project uh, you can also i mean uh, give a pull request let's say uh, you can also i mean maintain the projects uh, even even you can create your own wiki for this entire project so that uh, people will understand like what is actually happening it's even you can get the insight like when it is created and what are the active changes which is being happening and what are the comments what are the what is the code frequency like every uh, i mean stuff which is happening inside this repository uh, can be tracked with this insight so it is typically a very useful utility for us to understand like uh, the nook and corner of the particular uh, project okay now let us understand how to use a github desktop application to link with this uh, github cloud so that you could make all the changes uh, of, of your code which is pushed to your cloud so that anyone can use it out so let us go to google.com just search for github desktop so once you search it you will be getting this url uh, desktop.github.com just go inside that just click it uh, you will be prompted with this particular page where you will where you have an option to uh, download this uh, uh, windows application or a mac os application so based on your operating system you can download this so once i click download it will start to download the application so as i have already downloaded this particular application let me go there directly so let us inside this you can see you will be getting an application something like this you can see it here right so Okay, so uh, so now I'm just going to double click this particular application. It will just automatically get installed in your system and you'll be getting this uh, GUI just like that. Uh, since I already installed this particular application, it has already directly opening uh, my uh, repository and uh, I mean all the information which I've done previously. So all it, all it asks is like the uh, your user ID and password of your GitHub so that it will link with your cloud. Uh, I mean directly just like that. So on, on the, you can also establish a communication with your Google Chrome uh, with your GitHub uh, desktop. So it's very simple. So it's very straightforward which you can use it out. So now let me go to my GitHub test repository. I'm going to go for this code area. I'm going to open with my GitHub desktop. So it will ask for a prompt here. You can also click this button to uh, let's say I mean uh, never uh, get this pop-up again so just open it out so it will ask for us to uh, store like let's say uh, you can see like uh, from which repository do I need to clone and where I need to store this particular data in my local directory so I'm gonna choose okay let me let me keep it in uh, here itself so if you want to go for a different area where you have already done some changes in your project maybe you can clone it to that directory as well so now I'm just cloning it in the uh, document tab so this is how it get clones uh, clones your uh, I mean, data to your local uh, drive so now you can see uh, I mean the changes which you have done the history of the particular uh, uh, repository will be shown here okay so since uh, we have only added the license file and the readme file to it so it is just showing we have just made a one uh, commit where we have added these two files so now let us try to put some more files to it so let's say it's in my uh, wait, uh, sorry it's in my documents yes so where uh, GitHub test folder is available. Yeah. So now I'm going to put some uh, files to it. Okay. Let me create some text file. This is a test file. So I'm going to type some contents to it. So now, as soon as I've done this, you could see there's a change which has happened here. So if you feel like if you want to add this change to your particular uh, GitHub uh, cloud, all I want to do is commit to main. So if you give commit to main, it will show you uh, do I need to push this to my origin so let's say this commit is like it is going to note down the changes which you have done in your local uh, directories so if you feel like if you want to push this particular changes to your origin let's say your cloud just straight away click push to origin so that's it so it will automatically push your data to the origin 
and uh, you could see the changes directly in your uh, cloud in your uh, main uh, directory so you can see i have added a test text file so if i feel like i don't want this uh, thing so i'm just going to delete few uh, contents here okay so i'm going to save it again so now these changes will also be noted down here so you can easily see uh, the changes which i've done so i've, I've done some uh, deletion work here right and i also i mean uh, this is only available right now so these are the changes which are available right now so i'm going to commit to main i'm going to push to origin so it's applicable for any file which you're going to push it, whether it's an image or a python file or an ipython notebook so whatever it might be so let's say if you want to use your uh, google colab i mean with github you could always push your ipython notebook to uh, to github so that you could uh, call those programs to your uh, uh, i mean in your google colab so which we have saw in the previous video if you want to watch this do check the description uh, tab to uh, to watch that video so this is how you can make your changes into your project so now let's say i am going to do some some more changes in this into this text file so i've decided to go for uh, uh, i mean adding some new new lines like this is uh, another test file yes it is so I just add a few more lines so once i made changes to this particular uh, text file I've got the changes here. So if I feel like, uh, I mean, uh, this change is not needed for me. So if I feel like, okay, what have I done with the code? So I totally forgot, uh, I mean, what I've done, what, what are the changes which I've made in my code? Let's say if you have a thousand lines of code and you forgot like what are the problems or what are the extra line which I've added? So that might create a huge confusion, right? So in order to, I mean, uh, uh, avoid this kind of problem, you can directly go right click and just give discard changes. So if you give discard changes, automatically it will uh, i mean uh, restore to the previous version let's say the the previous committed uh, content okay so this is a very useful uh, utility because uh, i mean uh, if you are like working uh, onto a new concept a new implementation in your project and you feel like that has i mean totally crashed your project and you feel like if you haven't committed it yet up in your uh, i mean in your, into your project then you can directly discard the changes so now what if i have uh, i mean i'm just let me i mean type something up this okay i am using github so i've just changed some content yes i am so let's say i'm, I'm just adding this thing okay so i'm going to close it out so now i'm going to commit this change right say okay i'm going to commit this change so if i feel like if i feel like this particular uh, i mean uh, this uh, commit is not needed to me then i can uh, revert this commit okay so let's say if i revert this commit it will automatically be taken care of so if you revert this commit you could see that i mean uh, i mean uh, we have to push this to the origin so that all the changes will be like uh, synced up with your cloud so we can also do that so that you can revert the changes if you feel like if you have committed the changes directly okay so also if you feel like if you already pushed this commit to your origin let's say i mean uh, I, now i have reverted the changes right so let's say now the text file contains only the word this so now i'm just adding another file this is the final commit okay so i'm going to close this thing so if i feel like i'm going to i'm going to commit this change i'm going to push it to the origin right now so now now this particular change which i've done have been pushed to the origin right now so we can directly go to github and check the changes here so you can see this is the final commit so now i change my mind i just want to go back to the previous commit so all i want to do is just go to history just right click to the previous commit just revert changes in commit so once you do that you can see one commit i've been waiting in the local uh, i mean uh, local directory to be pushed to the cloud so i just push this to the origin right now so it will automatically get uh, changed into your local drive and also once you push it to the origin you can also see the changes once you refresh it you can see the word i've been changed right now. so thanks for watching this video if you feel like this video is useful just give a thumbs up to this video and also do share it to your friends thank you peace out